And our next guest is the chairman and CEO of Landry's. His empire spans 38 states, 14 countries, with over 600 locations. He owns high-end steakhouses, major tourist attractions, a number of hotels, five casinos, and the Houston Rockets. Let's welcome in a familiar face to CNBC, Tillman Fertitta. Tillman, fantastic to see you. It's been too long. I agree, Melissa. It's good to talk to you. <laughs> good to talk to you, too. I wish you were under better circumstances in terms of the economy and inflation, but let, let's deal with that problem of inflation, the health of the economy and jobs, um, and in particular, the debt markets. We've been seeing some major moves in bond markets in very short amounts of time, and I'm wondering what you are seeing in terms of the debt markets and the ability to finance companies or new projects. Well, first off, thank God I refinanced uh, in January and didn't wait till February. So all my debt's out to like 28, 29, and 30. But right now, this week, the spreads are where they were in June when you basically couldn't get a deal done. So you, the only deals you're going to really see out there are small deals where people can hit their revolver, and that's it. Because... Uh, there is no financing market. Even investment grade is tough right now. But in any leverage finance deal, you know, the, the, the one big deal that was done, you know, Citrix was, was a tough deal and the banks lost all a lot of money. So banks aren't really excited right now to go out there and give commitments whatsoever in which to do a public company deal, you have to have a commitment. Yeah. Um, what, is, what are the ramifications of that? I mean, I would think that fewer businesses get started, fewer projects get launched. Some businesses who aren't as fortunate as you in terms of having refinanced or have access to the capital markets, they go under. Are we at, the, at that point? Melissa, definitely. What, what's, what you're going to see happen in, in the next six months is if we don't get a hold of this and get rates back down and companies that did not refinance they are basically going to have to do a deal that is at a crazy rate. And, and, and I'm talking about, you know, 10 to 15 percent money. And if it's not one of those companies that has a lot of cash flow or it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a company that has a whole lot of debt, that when you start talking about those kind of dollars, it, it's a big number. Uh, I'm a billion dollar EBITDA company, but just our floating interest next year, we feel like is going to be 50 to 60 million dollars more than it was this year. And, and so, uh, but we're, a, like I said, a huge EBITDA company, but what about those companies that aren't? You're going to see some definite bankruptcies and issues in the next 12 to 18 months if we don't get a hold of this. I mean, the, the knock-on effect is the impact on the consumer ultimately. You say that, that from what you're seeing, and you certainly have got your fingers on the pulse of the consumer, the consumer is okay now. The consumer is spending now. But how are you preparing your businesses for the consumer uh, in six months or in a year? Well, right now the, con the consumer is spending. But the issue is, Melissa, is watch same-store sales. That's the, the biggest thing that you can watch right now. And I'm one that used to always say, don't worry that much about same store sales if you're in that zero to one to two positive or negative. But we're, we have very, very good same store sales, but our margins are less than they were last year and the year before because of the effect of inflation. So even though we're doing, I'd like to say a lot more business, our profit margin is really getting pushed down right now. But when the consumer stops spending and you go from positive five comps and positive seven comps to a negative two, three, four, five comps, it's going to change the world for so many different companies. So that's something you really need to watch right now, that we're covering up some of that with great sales, but that isn't going to continue as we keep raising rates and try to put an end to inflation. Are you seeing business spending come back? I mean, a lot of your properties are showing, you know, some of your fine dining establishments. Certainly those are business account, business expense sort of uh, dinners and meals that, you know, you have at uh, Maestro's or, or, or whatnot. And are you seeing that come back fully or has that not returned fully? So this is really interesting that one of the reasons that our sales are very good right now is the, the business 
group is back spending money, taking those private rooms and having the dinners for 10 and 12 and, and 50. And, and we're seeing a huge number every day right now. And so that money is back and that's part of it. But once again, it's not as profitable as it used to be. So we just got to keep watching this. But when companies come in and say, because they have to start laying people off, because that's what's going to happen when you keep raising rates because there's no new capital structure out there. Companies are not going to be doing M&A. They're not going to be spending money. That, that, that is when you're going to start seeing a slowdown in the consumer. Last quick question, Tillman. There's never enough time when, when it's a conversation with you. But last quick question. The price of what on which menu has gone up the most? Beef prime is 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 the most expensive of all right now um, and when you have a bunch of high-end restaurants like we do mm -hmm. from from Mastro's to Del Frisco's to catch uh, to the strip house to Martin's who all serve prime uh, it's hard and 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 the consumer needs to be patient when they see you know a 65 and 70 dollar steak on that menu because it's not just that that went up our energy price is up. Right. Every lease that's come up, the landlord wants more. It's everywhere and everything. And, and like I said, our margins are being hit. Wow. Tillman, thanks so much for the conversation. Always appreciate it. Thanks, Melissa. Good talking to you. Tillman Fertitta of Landry's. It's tough to be in business out there right now, Guy. I mean, a $65, $70 ribeye? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the that's the high rent district. Obviously, I'm not going to those establishments, Mel, but I'll push back on something that Tillman said, not looking to bring the guests back, as you know, that is taboo here on Fast Money. <laughs> but it's interesting, he said, when companies start laying people off, and again, third time in this show that I will bring back Squawk Box, somebody made a really good point this morning. They're, you can't lay people off because you can't find people to work in the first place. You know what happens then? Margins start to get whacked. So, this unemployment rate, as much as the Fed wants it to go higher, and I'm saying that, I'm not happy to be saying that, it's not going to go that much higher, I don't think, because quite frankly, companies are still looking for people and they can't fill empty seats. So you've got a real issue here in terms of, I think, what's going to happen to margins going forward as well. BK, your take? Yeah, I think you know, Tillman just gave a fantastic view inside what happens to a company when Fed policy lags, right? We're talking about margins getting squeezed. Now he's talking about, hey, I can't do a deal. And there's going to be smaller companies that, because of the interest rate increases, are going to go out of business. And M&A is going down. Wall Street is going to spend less at his restaurants. And those are the lag effects that have not come into this economy yet, which are the next shoe to drop. So we're really seeing it from what Yen said in the beginning about how we have these massive interest rates and currency moves moving on down the chain down to something where Tillman's saying, hey, I'm not going to expand, and I know those people are going to be going out of business, and that's where Guy's going to get the other people to hire because these companies aren't coming back. That's not a great situation.